Greetings, everyone. Pete Pardo here from Sea of Tranquility. Welcome to another episode of The Monster's Den. Come on, Chris. Get those fingers going. <laughs> <laughs> it's like when you eat too much salt and they get all... No, right? It's like, uh, yep, yeah, exactly. <laughs> so uh, tonight is uh, one of the episodes we do every so often after we have lots of homework episodes. This is the no homework episode. What we've been buying, some things we've watched in recent weeks. So it's just kind of like show and tell night. We've got uh, Chris Allo in the house, Craig Kaminsky, and we're keeping him up really late, but he's always a trooper. Davey Gallagher. What's Ooh. going on, fellas? <laughs> going on? Oh, are you? Nothing shaking but leaves on the trees. How are you, Pete? Uh, doing okay. Doing all right. We're getting ready for Fall Fest. It's it's here. It's it's uh, less than two days away. So crunch time is is upon us. So uh, lots going on, but we always have time for the Monsters Den. So uh, we've each uh, picked out you know a few things, handful of things that we've watched that we're going to talk about, show you know all that sort of thing. So uh, we'll go we'll go Chris, Craig, Davey, myself, and uh, that'll be that. So Mr. Allo, what do you got for us today? Okay, uh, so going going through all of them. Yeah, go through all. Okay. All right. Yeah. Uh, haven't gone through, uh, haven't been able to watch really much, as you mentioned, other than Batman. So uh, in, in the last you know, week or so, uh, I bought some stuff, but I didn't, I didn't bring any of it with me. Uh, but I did watch a few things. Uh, first thing I watched recently, uh, actually a bunch of these, a couple of these uh, were things that I had um, recorded on the DVR and uh, just been sitting there for a while. And, uh, you know, sometimes I record stuff that I already already own multiple copies of, uh, but you know it's just something to watch in the bedroom as I'm falling asleep. And uh, I, I don't know if Davey gets uh, the uh, Sven Gulli, the horror host. I know who he is. I do. I do like his shows. So uh, I had a couple of those that I watched recently, uh, even though I own both of them. Uh, the one that I watched uh, last night, uh, I think, is the uh, greatest. Um, made for TV horror movie of all time. Uh, we've talked about it pr on, on previous episodes, and I know that that's quite a, a bold statement, Pete. But I think there's nothing better in the made for TV market other than gargoyles. Mm. And I watched it last week too, after coming yeah. home from dinner with the missus. <laughs> yeah, I, I watched it uh, a little bit over the next uh, last oh, couple good. Of days. Oh, good. Yeah, it's so good. And, you know, what I really like about uh, Sven Gulli as a host is that, uh, yeah, he cracks a lot of jokes, um, but some of them are actually funny. Uh, but besides that, he has a, a, a definite uh, uh, enjoyment of these movies. And um, he, I love that he sort of breaks down who everybody is in the cast and who directed what. And he points out, you know, who's who starred in other movies we might have seen. Um, and, you know, just behind the scenes info, all that kind of thing I can really appreciate. Like, you know, not to knock him, but fuck him, I'm going to knock him. There's a show that's been, been going for years and years out on the West Coast that runs on YouTube now for many years called Creature Features. And they've got some British guy, and I'm sure he's not even British because he's got like the worst accent. But like literally, he 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 hosts this thing, and the movies that he plays, he has no fucking idea what they are, who's in it. I'm like, he just acts like an idiot. Um, so yes, so I, I really do like Sven Gulli. So uh, I watched Gargoyles, which I, I think is just amazing. I'm like, Jesus, watching it going, this is this is the greatest made for TV movie ever. Somebody should remake this, mm -hmm. uh, but still do it all with with rubber suits and you know all practical effects. But man, yeah, how about let's get that on Blu-ray for crying out loud? Yes, yeah, hundred percent. Yep. We replaced the there was you know two two issues two DVDs, but yeah, you're right. That's a great point. It's it's getting on Blu-ray. Uh, but watching it, man, Bernie Casey is the creepiest, one of the creepiest rubber monsters ever. Sweet Christmas, Jennifer Salt yeah. is fucking gorgeous. Holy shit, it's got that you know great rubber monsters, awesome seventies uh feel to it uh, you know great oh, thing. the, the monster running around in slow motion oh, right? oh, it's got and glenn great of, and great you know, use of darkness too sometimes those yes. are too dark but it, it actually works really well with with that and yeah 100 100 percent. so i think that it just works out great and one thing that i love in uh the, uh, uh, the cheesy horror movie an older actor or actress who has no idea what's going on and in that case it's grayson hall from yes. uh, from dark shadows native iguana 
she's completely at sea. She has no idea what's going on. I mean, it's so funny because, you know, she's supposedly drunk the whole time. Even yeah. watching last night, I'm like, she runs to the police station with with a glass in her hand. Yeah. And then when she gets to the police station, she knows exactly where the sheriff keeps his bottle of whiskey. <laughs> and she just helps herself and starts pouring it. It's, you know, I, I've seen this a million times. I don't think I ever noticed it and laughed as much as I did last night when I was watching it. So yeah, that one, if you haven't seen, I'm sure, I'm sure it's on YouTube. That's a five-star classic. Yeah. You want me to run through all, all of them, Pete? Yeah, go ahead, Chris. All right. So the next one, again, another one's from Spenguli, another seventies classic, which we, uh, we, you and I had talked about Pete, because this is one that the first time I saw it, I actually didn't like it because it is a bit of false advertising and that's AIP's, frogs oh i remember seeing remember seeing the poster in like famous monsters and like it took me like god like six or seven years to track down the movie and then i finally watched it but you know the poster for those who haven't seen it the poster is a is an enormous frog with a human hand coming out of the mouth so I thought it was, I'm sure you, Pete, I, I have it. That's on a double. What's the other movie that it's on the double with for the Chef Factory? Oh, on the Blu-ray? Uh, yeah. It's one of those. Night of the Lepus. The similar one, it's like Night of the Lepus or something, isn't it? It's one of those. Is it? No, 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 no not the one is here. A, it's, Night of the Lepus is a separate one. It's another uh, animal attack film. What the hell? Is it the, what's that octopus one? The one with Shelley that. Winters. It's not that one? No, it's not that either. No, it's not tentacles. Either. It's not no, tentacles? No. What's the one with all the mice? Um, um. Oh, 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 uh, Food of the Gods. Oh, well, two Fs, yeah. So, yeah, when I was a kid, I always thought it would be like giant frogs running around eating people. Um, but unfortunately, it's not. Uh, it is an animals attack film. Um, oh, and there it is. Uh, yep, oh, that, there's a poster. Now, I have always said, we got to make that movie. I still want to see that movie. It's been like yeah. 40 years. I still want to see that movie. Uh, but it is a really well done, you it's know. really good. Yeah. Animals attack film, um, you know, it takes place down south, and uh, you know, it's it's frogs and lizards and alligators and spiders and and they're just going wild down yeah. south. All and again, the creatures that's, of the swamp basically yes. like kill kill humanity type of thing. Absolutely, and, and again, another red one red. from from uh, Sven uh with uh, with that he went over everything and you know poked a couple jokes, but also had a really good time. You know, given a lot of uh, behind the scenes content. So, uh, again, another one I really enjoyed. Uh, this one, I know Pete had mentioned this. I had seen, I, I have it on DVD, never got the Blu ray, uh, but watched a, a really cleaned up copy recently on Turner Classic Movies and enjoyed the shit out of it. Uh, the Hammer film, The Lost Continent. Yes, yes, yes. Oh my God. So much fun. Uh, you know, uh, it, it's it's really such a such a simple premise. Yes. You know, uh, it's it's a, it's a ship, uh, you know, out at, at sea, and um, you know they get um, they they sail into uh, I guess the lost continent, and then there's just a bunch of awesomely bad uh, rubber monsters, and they they fight off the monsters, and 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 the locals that li- there we go. And the locals that live in the lot, the lost continent. And I gotta say, Pete, I could be wrong. Uh, you, you or Davy or, or Craig could um, could correct me. But I, I gotta say, I think that's the best cleavage of any yeah. Hammer film any anywhere. The the one girl, I, I can't think of her name right now. Um, but oh, oh, uh, Rory Kinnear in one of the uh, one of the Hammer movies is not bad, no. Oh. I mean, the, the, this one, the, you know the girl I'm talking about. I mean, yeah. man, um, her back, her back it, must have been it, killing her the entire production. Susanna Lee. It was very much. There you the, go. It was very much the beginning of the whole. Um, we're casting you purely on your looks. We're not interested. Oh, yeah. in, we're not interested in Barbara Shelley's acting ability anymore. We want. We want just, you know. Then you move into the uh, the Karnstein trilogy where they were purely just casting actresses on yes. spec. You know, Sus- but, Susanna uh, Lee. Does yeah, that sound right, Su- Susanna Lee. Yeah, uh, but yes, a, a lot of fun. You know, crappy special effects, but man, horrible, it is but one of the most colorful Hammer films. Yes, yep. so so vivid, which is funny because I have the old DVD, and you know, it is an old DVD because that must have come out like two thousand. 
I swear it didn't look that colorful on DVD as this new uh, remastered version looked. It looked fantastic. Yeah, my Blu-ray looks looks great. Yeah, it really does. I'm, I'm sure they. I'm sure that's what they use the 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 scan for that. Indicator put it out here, and it stars um, Eric Porter. Funnily enough, not that one, um, but Eric Porter stars in it. Um, who would be in um, one of the best Hammer movies for my money, Hands of the Ripper. Um, one yes. of the more um, so he's the star of that as well. Yeah. Hands of the Ripper, that, that's a classic. That one was the one on a double feature with uh, Twins of Evil. Mm, which I get on the stage part, way back when. Part of the Karnstein trilogy, so it makes yes. no sense to put them together. But, hey. yeah, another classic. Uh, so yeah, that was a lot of fun. Uh, let's see, what else did I recently watch? Oh, uh, Death Wish 2. Uh, my buddy Sean got the 4K disc of the uncut version of uh, Death Wish 2, and it looked fantastic. Uh, never looked better, and I know there have been a lot of versions where, you know, some versions were, were missing a little bit of violence or a little bit of the rape scenes, uh, but this is the, the newest disc from, from Vinegar Syndrome, and it, it does look fantastic. I mean, the best it's ever looked, so uh, if you're a Death Wish fan... Uh, you know, for for my money, of the five Death Wish films, Death Wish yeah. Two I think was the best. Yeah. Um, and now Death Wish One just got announced. Somebody, Kino Lorber, I think, is putting that out on 4K, 4K. here in the states. But yeah, I mean, it definitely. Uh, I was like, all right, I, I definitely need to buy this for my collection. And uh, the last one was uh, last night. Uh, part of the reason why I couldn't watch anything last night was here in the uh, in the U.S. They did uh, for two nights only. They're doing the uh, the new movie Dio Dreamers Never Die, the Ronnie James Dio documentary. Uh, it was playing last night, and it's again on Sunday. And um, I went and I loved it. I thought it was great. Um, it's about a two hour documentary, all about the um, you know the history, the, the life of uh, of Ronnie James Dio. Uh, I thought it was really well done. Uh, it, they they hit pretty much all the marks I thought, you know, covered all the, uh, you know, all the bands he was in, you know, covered all the major records and tours that he did. Um, you know, really my only complaint, um, and it's not that big of a complaint, but I am a pretty hardcore fan, is that, um, yeah, there's a lot of footage that they show of, of Ronnie's previous bands. The problem for, for me, and not that it's a problem, uh, like I saw it with my wife and she loved it, but she didn't notice this because she doesn't notice this stuff. But they, all the footage they showed, uh, all the concert footage, was all stuff we've already seen. Um, so, like, the number one thing that I wanted to see was some footage of Ronnie James Dio fronting Black Sabbath that I hadn't previously seen. And unfortunately, you know, the seven or eight clips that they used of Ronnie fronting Black Sabbath, I, I, own, I know them all, I own them all. And I was like, that, that was it. And if I'm not mistaken, I think all the other footage from uh, Rainbow and Dio, there was, I think one, there was one thing from Rainbow that I wasn't quite sure on, but everything I was like, Oh, okay. Yeah, that's from this. That's from that. I was like, all right, that's the Neon Knights photo shoot. I'm like, okay, that's the December 1980 Hammersmith Odeon bootleg VHS. That's the Mob Rules Hammersmith Odeon bootleg VHS. That's a clip from the black and blue. Like, I was like, ah, there was nothing new. So as far as a film and the narrative goes, I think they did a fantastic job. Yeah. That was the one part that was a disappointment. And one other little tiny nitpick thing, which I thought was so strange, um, was they showed a lot of photos, which I thought was great. Um, but especially seeing it on the big screen, you know, they're showing all these photos of, you know, all the different Dio lineups and the different Sabbath lineups and Rainbow and what have you. And there's a lot of close-ups of, you know, Ronnie's face and whatever. And, Long story short, when you're looking at these photos, there are a shit ton of scratches and tears and blemishes that were never touched. So, like, it looks like Ronnie's been punched in the face or he's got a scar under his eye or whatever. 
And like I know from my buddy Glenn, who we've had on the show, who does documentaries uh, with with spookies and and you know all sorts of other documentaries he's done with Vinegar Syndrome and various other companies. Yeah, when they get all these photos, they touch him up. He touches up every single photo and fixes up the blemishes. So I thought that was for whatever reason. I thought that was a little weird. Um, but you know, again, those two nit, slight nit, nitpicks aside, I thought uh, Dio Dreamers Never Die was a, a fantastic documentary. Um, I will buy this in a heartbeat if it comes out on home video, which hopefully it will. Uh, hopefully there'll be some cool extras and behind the scenes. And I know uh, for Craig and myself, when we saw it, you know, they ran the whole movie, and before the movie started. They were like, hey, you know, don't leave because after the credits, there's some extra footage. And <laughs> and it was maybe yeah, like Samuel Jackson recruits them for the Avengers, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean it, it if they hadn't had that, Davy, we definitely wouldn't have stayed. But it was like like maybe five minutes of scenes that they had run, some of them that they had run and some that they hadn't. Uh, it was like extended scenes, and it was definitely, you know, w- worthwhile. Yeah. And hopefully that's an indication of some of the some of the stuff that'll be in this eventual because I can't, you know, I, I would assume this will be a big hit on uh, on, on home video. Well, yeah, for sure. Yeah, I mean, the uh, um, I thought the um, some of this, I mean, I don't know about you, Chris, but I thought some of the uh, performance uh, footage was really grainy. You know, oh. considering it's from the eight, some of this stuff is from the eighties and beyond. It seemed very grainy. Hundred percent, uh, Greg. Hundred yeah, percent. Because I mean, at least from from where I was, because I I could understand the Ronnie and the Prophet stuff being really grainy, but not uh, the Sacred Heart tour, you know, or things like that. And my only, uh, again, mirroring what Chris said, uh, the only thing I there were no new interviews with Rich. There was nothing with Richie Blackmore. There may have been a uh, voiceover. Rich, he, I mean, he doesn't do interviews, so yeah, I didn't expect and, that at all. Um, there was uh, uh, besides, yeah, no. Uh, they had Roger Glover. Yeah, they had Roger. They had Roger Glover on there, and then uh, they kind of glan. They did a real. They uh, focused really heavy on the first three Dio albums, and then they kind of touched on Dream Evil. And then when it came to the other ones, they just kind of like showed the picture of the album, flip, yeah, flip through it. But one of the ones that they included with that was Dehumanizer. And yes. they didn't, they didn't, they didn't mention, you know, oh, by the way, he got back together with the guys in Black Sabbath, you know, and, and uh, they, they skipped over that for the heaven and hell stuff that they talked about later. Yep. Craig is a hundred percent right. And uh, I pointed that out to, uh, to the misses on the ride home. I was like, you know, you know, Ronnie joined Sabbath three times technically. And she was like, but wait, you know, and I was like, no, no, no. They showed the cover for Dehumanizer, but they pretty much, glanced over it but they did explain how the 90s were you know a terrible time and everybody was in dire straits but here's a funny thing i just watched a video of uh tony iomi at the premiere was tony and wendy uh, wendy dio and they were being interviewed by some guy uh for the premiere of the movie and uh the guy was you know asking tony iomi and and tony iomi was like yeah yeah that that's right you know ronnie was great you know he he joined this he joined sabbath you know he joined us twice and i'm thinking no dude it was three times <laughs> like you're forgetting they just like they forgot about the middle one in the movie but that that's okay and they they had new interviews with tony geezer and bill yeah uh, and vinnie uh, in, in it and um of course, lots, lots of uh, his wife did most. And I, I must admit, I've never seen pictures of her from 40, 50 years ago. She's beautiful. You know, Knock I've out. only I've only ever seen her, you know, now <laughs> or over the last 10 years. But I never saw vintage pictures of her. It was, yeah, you know, I mean, not to not to not to knock anybody's looks. But I remember meeting, uh, you know, Ronnie and, and Wendy in, you know, in the city and interviewing them. And I was like. Yeah, I was like, that's that, that's your wife, huh? You're a rock star, but yeah, Craig's right. She was gorgeous in there. Yeah, I was surprised. I was you know, kind of surprised. Yeah, he's had a big strapping. But it was Bonnie James deal. Yeah, Come but on. but with but along with uh, uh, final thing, along with what Chris said. I mean, uh, you know, very informative, but also really, uh, 
uh, touching and sad in a few parts. Oh yeah, you know, yeah. The, uh, the once, wife was once crying you toward, once you get towards the end of yeah. uh, the oh, end wow. of his uh, end of his life and everything, and just all the testimonials from people that yeah, you you love the songs, you 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 know you love you you know you love the albums and everything, but he just was obviously a genuinely decent person that. I mean that so many nice things that he did uh, you know, for uh, not just other musicians, but for regular people. And one yeah. of the, you know, just, so it was just, it was, it was a really, really well-made, uh, really well-made documentary. And it was cool to see it on a, on a big screen and a nice, yes. in a nice comfy theater. <laughs> yeah. And the theater that I went to was, was packed. I mean, there was, there was yeah. the way more people than empty seats. There was only a handful of empty seats. Mm with you cool all right craig what else you got well uh besides the do uh uh documentary on film uh, i believe chris saw it too a few weeks ago uh jaws uh played oh, yes 3D, jaws played in 3d uh for what was it uh, chris a few just a few days or um or... yeah it was i think a week they did it it was yeah. um and uh, I, I was obviously I've, I've seen the movie many times, but I've never, never saw jo uh, the first Jaws on the big screen. I saw Jaws 2 in the theater when I was a kid. And uh, uh, being honest, I uh, didn't think that, you know, I, it, you know, seeing it in 3D at first, I thought, well, you know, it, you know. It, the movie obviously wasn't designed to be in 3D and it's and it's old. And so, I mean, it's, you know, how, how good can it look? It was spectacular. Yeah. I thought it was beautiful in 3D. I mean, it was just, uh, I I was stunned, you know, at, at just how, and it was mostly just for um, uh, texturing or or however you're for for it was like uh, mostly depth depth uh, a few t a few times where uh, like the kids with the cardboard fin. And then when they show the person who has like a gun, you know, like like it was going to shoot him, or there's a few parts where things are one, really one part that really at you. jumped out to me was when they uh, were in Quint's hut and he's he's cooking the uh, the shark jaws, yeah. and there's a big set of shark jaws on the wall, yeah, and the camera kind of looks looks at it like look like those those big jaws were co coming out at the screen yeah but it was it was uh really really well done and and that now i i really want to see uh the dawn of the dead uh, uh romero version that comes out uh, at the end of october um yeah. uh, chris said it might be the same one that was done before but yeah i'm sure it's the same one that richard rubenstein the producer did yeah. i saw it with Richard Rubenstein in uh, 2018 or yeah, 2019. Second Saint, Second Saint put it out over here. It's a phenomenal restoration. No, no, but this is this is different. This is in 3D. Oh, sorry, but it's from that. It's from that print I'm saying. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm assuming it's from the same scan. As there only was, there only was. As we know, it was on yeah. Walking Key for the longest time. But yeah, it's it's in it's uh, Richard Rubenstein spent I don't know how many millions he said. Um, and it is in 3D, but it's very similar to Jaws in that it's it's uh, got a lot of depth, and there was one part that jumps out. But yeah, I was like Craig said, I was shocked at how Jaws, how good Jaws in 3D looked. I yeah. guess I shouldn't have though, because Dawn of the Dead wasn't made for 3D, and that looked fantastic. And and the, and when I saw, when I saw it, there were counting myself four people in the entire theater. You know what they're missing. Wow. So yeah, was, you know when uh, when I saw that's a good point, Craig. When I saw Jaws in 3D in their limited run, there was not a lot of people. Um, I saw. I also saw the same week. I saw the Rogue One re-release in uh, in IMAX. That was an IMAX only, and wow. I think I think Rogue One for the Star Wars film had more people than Jaws in 3D. Yeah, and the, and the, and these posters, uh, there was nobody there to hand them out. There was just a whole stack sitting there. So I uh, took one for myself. Then later on, I read my text, and Chris says, "Hey, can you grab me one?" Right. <laughs> so, because, and then I there, there was no the one. Theater. There was no one there. So it's like, yep. And I you know, I just, my theater had no free Jaws posters. So uh, yeah. thanks, Craig, for grabbing me one. I'd be singing along if I was the only person in a Jaws greatest farewell and the dude. Oh well, I'm sitting. I'm luckily no one was. A, you know, the, the USS Indianapolis scene is one of my my favorite probably in any in any movie and i'm sitting there 
know, and, you know, it's, it's like, well, there's nobody around me, so I'm like, I'm free I just to... love the relationship. I mean, as much as Roy Scheid is great, it's all about the relationship between Quint and Hooper for me. I love those two bands, especially because they hated each other in real life, absolutely yeah. despised each other. But uh, uh, as Chris mentioned about seeing a, a, a great made-for-TV movie in Gargoyles, uh, during a hot day recently, I watched a bad made-for-TV movie. And then this is 1977's Snow Beast. Uh, oh, with, uh, I've seen that. Bo Svensson and Yvette uh, Mignou. Uh, not good. Uh, really not a whole lot that you can see besides an arm. Uh, and uh, it's really just a lot of skiing and snow but not a lot of snow beast and oh, come on uh, pete you don't have it do you please don't please no <laughs> nice <laughs> but uh yeah it it, it, but it was one of those where it's like well it's like 90 some degrees outside let's put on a snow movie and it's yeah. like oh no it's uh <laughs> it's the snow it's all wasn't right. no, wasn't necessarily one of the best ones. No, but, it's got its moments. No, I think I bought it for like five bucks. I was like, yeah. Yeah, I mean, of I, course, I, uh, Bo was, was one always, of, always yeah, one of the worst actors ever. So you know, it's fun watching him. Yeah, occasionally a furry arm pops up, but that was uh, that was mostly about it. Uh, I also fired up uh, uh, Star Crash with uh, uh, Carolyn Monroe and had to and had to watch that. Uh, so a lot lot of fun as you know we've all all seen it. Uh, uh, Star Wars uh, knockoff or and Barbarella kind of thrown in there mm -hmm. too. But you know, but a but a fun a fun movie uh, none, nonetheless. Um, last week after after you know we we watched all the Batman movies so. Um, mirroring perhaps what uh, uh, Chris did uh, last year when we saw the movie, the 25 hour movie marathon. How do you cap off the 25 hour movie marathon by going to another movie? So how do you cap off watching all these Batman movies? By watching another Batman movie. So last Friday I watched Mask of the Phantasm oh. for the first time. And uh, I, I liked it. I thought I- I have well, never seen it. it. No, no. Well, and. Uh, but although I'm not surprised that it didn't do too well uh, theatrically, just because I think it looks kind of like a like a regular cartoon that you would see, uh, you know, in the afternoon or something at the time. But uh, but it was a lot of fun. I like the like the plotting and and everything with the Joker and the, and with the Phantasm. And so I, I I did enjoy it. So that was a that was cool to see. And plus, a lot of the people's uh, comments from last week's video with us mentioned Mask of the Phantasm. And Chris himself had, had mentioned how much he enjoyed that movie. So I figured I should, you know, fire it up. And uh, it's the uh, first one I ever saw in the cinema. Um, was oh, really? Because I loved Batman, the animated series as a kid. And um, wow, what a film. And when you grow up and start, to, it still works as like a noir thriller. Uh, and they cast it like that because you've got Stacey Keach as your main gangster in it. Um, you, a, a the good, it? Yeah. You know, it's ridiculous as if you're watching this crime thriller. He was one of the ones that it's like I was hearing his voice and it's like that sounds like fish, you know. And then, and then I'm, the I'm just like, the good I saw the credits. And I was like, oh, yeah, I, picked, I picked one out. I was good with that. Uh, another There's one. There's a I lot watched. of really good Batman animated films. A lot yeah. of. Them. Yeah. I've seen I've seen a handful of them on on um, HBO Max. They've got a ton. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, if at some point we'd ever do a top five or something, there's certainly plenty. Uh, De definitely plenty need some some from. advance warning though, because there are uh, there's a lot. There's a lot. Yeah, yeah, they used to be like a small canon, and then they started doing like their own mini thing based on like the New Fifty Two stuff, yeah. and you know the, the Damian Wayne saga had its whole series yeah, son of batman and yeah yeah there's, there's a lot to it and then there's the standalone ones where they adapt like year one and Dark like Night. A ninja or jack the ripper one and yep. yeah, yeah all these get, uh, go from by gaslight and stuff and yeah it's pretty yeah. damn good actually yeah yeah but an, another one that I watched, this was from 2012. Uh, this is with Luke Evans called No One Lives. Uh, mm -hmm. This was pretty good. Uh, this was, it's kind of a um, a gang of uh, thugs basically picked the wrong person to mess with. Yeah. In, in a nutshell. And uh, uh, he starts and the, he takes takes them out. There's some plot twists with it too. Uh some good some good violent uh good violent kill scenes and uh no, it's decent. I mean it's uh it's available for for free on on most of the streaming services. So uh, uh there are worse ways to spend uh, 90 minutes, that's for sure. Um 
one of the other uh, that I fired up, and this is, again, this is pure nostalgia. I, and for whatever reason, I don't know why this get, this sort of gets bad reviews and everything. From 1983, Krull. Uh, this has oh. been on uh, HBO this month. I saw this in the movies as a kid in the summer of 83 and uh, always really enjoyed it. It's like a fun Dungeons and Dragons type uh, type movie. Liam Neeson in a small role in one mm -hmm. of his uh, one of his first uh, roles. Uh, Excalibur may have been his first. But uh, just a fun movie, although, yeah, it's got its flaws. It's like they, they spend so much time looking for the uh, the glaive, you know, the weapon here. And then he uses it for about uh, two minutes at the end of the movie and loses it, you know, but uh, but a lot of fun. And the the, the big the thing with this, when, when I saw this in the uh, in the movies as a kid, uh, my family or my uh, my mom, my brother and I, along with my aunt and cousin, went uh, to the Jersey shore for a vacation in the summer of 83. So the, the uh, my, my mom and her sister would go off at night to, you know, go do their thing. And so the three of us would uh, walk the boardwalk and a few nights we went to the movies. One night we went, uh, the first night we went to see Return of the Jedi. And uh, you know, of course really enjoyed that. My cousin is a few years older than my brother and, and, and myself. So we saw Return of the Jedi the first night. Next night we saw Kroll. Third night, my cousin said, "Enough of this fantasy shit. I want to go see something of my own." So the third night, we uh, the third night, the three of us went to see Octopussy. So that was uh, so that was at least that so that was fun uh, to see. So three three consecutive uh, uh, fun movies in, nice. in three. So uh, and then finally, uh, the last one. And this was bad, but this might be one under one of those so bad it's good. Uh, it's from 1982. And this is called Night Beast. Oh yeah, uh, yeah. It's I, uh, uh, and, and I love that movie. Yeah, <laughs> uh, it, it's Great, yeah. A, ba a bad monster from space with a ray gun that just melts things, and uh, one of the most uncomfortable to watch sex scenes I think. Oh, ever. <laughs> so good, <laughs> but Frank. so funny. I mean, but uh, and and J.J. Abrams actually does the music for it. Uh, he's yes. billed, he's billed as Jeffrey Abrams yes. uh, in it, but uh, uh, directed by it, the great Don Dola. Yes, <laughs> yeah. I have I mean, watched the, that Blu-ray like five times. I have it somewhere because <laughs> it is so much fun. Yeah, it, it, it's, it's 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 like a really shitty version of Predator. Yeah. But like you know, done years before Predator came out, and just just on a five dollar budget, and, and just yeah, it was it was one of those where it, it looks like it was made for five hundred dollars with yeah. uh, with money to spare when they yeah. were finished. Yeah. But, Most but, uh, but a lot of but a lot of fun, and of course, I, I, when I when I was watching it, and this uh, love scene comes up between the two police officers, oh. I was I, I first the the, the woman. Uh, disrobes and i was like okay you know but then they spent just as much time on this uh fro-headed uh sheriff or whatever and it was like oh god please make it stop i mean it was just it, it was uh, uh uh it was in one of those uh bad but yet good uh type cat uh category oh for sure so, uh, yeah so yeah so anybody if you get a chance check that out uh night beast that's from, pretty much gone to career four years um so bad it's good so. yeah yeah so that, that that was those were mine. Cool. Davey, what do you got? Cookie cookie. Um well since I had a mention um briefly in passing, I, I did a video on my channel about this other day, but um a TV movie from the early 80s, which is, is quite deplorable in its its message um and its filmmaking. But it's the uh, the world premiere blurry of um mazes and monsters. Um, oh, sure. starting Hanks, yeah. starting Tom, Tom Hanks. Hanks. Oh, yeah. um, so it's Tom Hanks' first ever starring role. Um, so you'd think it would have had some kind of notoriety, but essentially it's based on a somewhat true life story, although it's based on the book of someone's interpretation of the real life story of a young Dungeons and Dragons player. And it basically blames D&D &D for destroying this young man's life. What I love about this, and this is from, from um, a, a relatively new label in the UK, and it's region free folks, if anyone does want to import it, um, it it knows that the film uh, extras know that it's bad and it's offensive and it doesn't understand mental health and it goes into that in the extras um it kind of goes into you're shitting all over dungeons and dragons culture because in the same way that tipper gore was trying to shit all over music in the 80s and that kind of thing you know it's just part of the 
the the menace of the time, you know, an older generation just completely misrepresenting what was going on at the time. Um, so it's kind of fascinating from that point of view and puts up a really good case for the defence. Um, so Mazes and Monsters, an absolutely terrible film, but a fascinating um, time capsule. Um, when I, saw, I mentioned it to Ryan, he summed it up best where he said, um, so it's a bit like We For Madness for the 80s. And I said, exactly, exactly, <laughs> exactly. exactly what it is. I remember watching that in, I guess it was 1982 on the original broadcast. And yeah. even as a kid, I was like, wow, this movie's like a real downer. Yeah, and it's, it's got a very depressing end. Yeah. But it's got, it's got like Vera Miles is in it and stuff. And um, um, what's her name from Forbidden Planet? Anne Francis. And, you know, it's got big, big names in it. Um, Tom Hanks obviously wasn't big at the time. I think he'd only been the villain in one episode of Happy Days at this point. But, and uh, he was in uh, He Knows You're Alone for like a couple of minutes. A couple of minutes. Yeah. 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 But um, so. This wasn't one of his Oscar winning roles that would come later with uh, Dragnet. Um, so next one, um, there's a couple here where I'd like to talk about them, but it's one of those ones we have to kind of not talk about them because if you want somebody to enjoy it, you just have to say, take my word for it. Um, this is Men. Um, it's directed oh. by Alex, Alex Garland, mm. um, who people might remember in the last um, few years. He wrote um, and then co-directed um, the Dread film that came out 10 years ago. Um, but he also, um, or oh, what was his flop a couple of years ago? Uh, the, 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 um, Annihilation, the one with Natalie Portman. Remember, like, oh, yeah, a, the sci-fi movie, one, yeah. Yeah, which was straight to Netflix. And he was he was really angry that, they, that it didn't go to the cinemas. Or anything, and it, pre-pandemic and whatnot. Yeah. Um, so this is him going back to a very basic type of filmmaking um, where... It's Jessie Buckley, and um, she's lost her partner. And she goes into a small, small town, small village, um, and strange things start happening. Um, and everywhere she goes, every person she meets has the face of her partner, and they're all played by Rory Kinnear, um, who people might know best from um, well, in Britain, things like the first episode of Black Mirror and whatnot, but for international audiences, he's Bill Tanner in the Daniel Craig Bond movies, um, kind of the M's, M's uh, right-hand uh, man. Um, but he's the, the husband, essentially, who then starts to be the face of everybody that she meets in this village. So it's a, a psychological thriller with a very bizarre ending. It goes in dark, dark places. Um, it's not one you'd stick on for a, a fun movie night with some beers, but it's a, a really, really good psychological folk horror. Um, so I think it would appeal to quite a lot of people in a, you know, not in a, not in a fun way. But I mean, it says it's an absolute game changer at the top. I'm not sure what game it's changing or how, but <laughs> you know, somebody gave it five stars. So whoever you are, uh, well, it's total film. So don't don't listen to that. Um, here's a fun one. All deceased, all deceased except the dead, um, by Pupi Avati, um, which is uh, like that cover. That's pretty. It, cool. Yeah, well, this is what's cool about it. It's a, an Italian film from the seventies, um, and I'm sure we've seen Murder by Death with uh, Peter Falk, and you know that that great parody of uh, of um, kind of um, House of Haunted Hill kind of movies. This does that, but for Jalo. Um, it's a parody of Jalo, but made at the height of Jalo. Um, and the director of it, um, who had just done The House with Laughing Windows the year before, oh, yeah. which, which, is, which is a great film. And he would go on to do um, um, Z uh, Zeta, is Zeta? Yeah. Zeta? Zeta? Can't remember. That was also, uh, God, that was called Revenge of the Dead in America. Yes. Um, quite, quite hard. a great poster. Yeah, quite awesome a horror zombie movie. that's not in the movie. Yeah, yeah, um, quite. A, but this is, um, and we seem to have one of these almost every other bloody week on the den. Is um, it's one of those um, old dark house movies. Um, so it's very much like Murder by Death, um, Ten Little Indians by Agatha Christie, um, and a little bit of if you've seen the Ealing comedy, um, Kind Hearts and Coronets. Um, there's a fortune being promised after a certain amount of a family are going to be bumped off. And um, this bumbling book collector stumbles into things. Uh, this is also region free, by the way, um, and released by the folks at 88 Films. So um, a fun parody of Giallo films made in Italy at the time. So it's, it's quite fun from that point of view. Um, so, you know, right in the middle of the Giallo movement. So, yeah, all exist, 
all deceased except the dead. And there's your sign coming there. So even at the time they were making fun of the tropes, which is quite fun to think of. You know, they knew the rules of the game. Even back then. I'm going to stop throwing these because they're going to start hitting each other in a minute. <laughs> um, the Righteous um, just came out from Arrow. Um, this is just a depressing, dark film that I cannot recommend to anybody because there's a good <laughs> chance you um, I really like it, but there's a good chance you all want to go into a bathtub and not come out again afterwards. It's a... Yeah. The Righteous, it's a good film. Um, it's it's a, a, another psychological film. It's set in Newfoundland. And everybody seems to pronounce that differently in the film. I noticed that. Is that a thing where people can't pronounce Newfoundland in uh, Canada? Um, so you can tell who's an actual Canadian in it. But as usual from Arrow, it's, um, it's stacked with extras. Um, there's, it's all done in black and white. Um, and it's, it's about grief, guilt, faith. It's a bit like a, a kind of psychological horror version of First Reformed by Paul Schrader from a few years ago. Um, but... Yeah, terribly depressing, and uh, again, not one for the. No, I'm not going to throw it. Yeah, fuck. Right, that's the last one. That's the last one. Um, As the wall comes crumbling down. (laughs) So, uh, sorry. Um, No, um, once you've done a film like that, you need something to perk you up. Nothing perks you up better than um, zombie horrors from Kazakhstan. Um, So. Sweetie, you won't believe it. It's indeed <laughs> just that. Um, a zombie horror from Kazakhstan, um, where a bunch of guys go on a kind of a uh, stag do, um, and uh, or a, what do you call them over there? The, do you sta- do you call them stag do's? Um, uh, guys bachelor, the bachelor party, bachelor party, of course. Tom Hanks connection, his worst movie. Um, so this is a biz- well, as you can imagine, a zombie movie from Kazakhstan. It's, <laughs> well, I'm sold so far. There's a scene. Well, I'm just going to tell you one thing about one. Scene. Heard zombie. That's old. Now is this Davy? Is this new or old? He's uh, last year, the year before. Okay. The cinemas. It's one of those pandemic kind of like what what can we buy from overseas and license because we can't. Okay. You know, one of those. Um, I will just tell you one thing. There is a scene in this where they need to have a raft and they have no wood. So they use sex dolls taped together. Again, Davey, you're telling me pretty good so far. Yeah. Well, sweetie, you won't believe it. Um, so <laughs> it's, it's a perfect title for this film. Every five minutes, something happens to make you go, huh? You know the way your, where your dog looks when it's a bit confused and it does all this stuff? <laughs> You know, that's the way you are when you watch this film, but it's um, it's actually got a lot of heart as well. And towards the end, there's some shit hot action. It's a bit like Shaun of the Dead in that regard, and it's not that good, but it, okay. it works as a genre film and also as a comedy. And, uh, you know, it's probably one of the greatest uh, Kazakhstani movies I've ever seen, to be honest. It's definitely in the top 300. Yeah. <laughs> definitely. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. I, I think I think Dave is selling me on that one. I yeah. might have to look that one up. You well, put who, that uh, which is the, which uh, what is that on? What's what is that? Is that an arrow film or is that 101 a, films? Oh, 101 it's on. Okay, gotcha. And okay. I always get mixed up because we've got 101 and 88. Yeah, me too. I think just join forces and become 189 films for God's sake. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. Um that smells like a secret Satan uh, choice. Uh, I was just going to say, man, I wish Davey would have given uh, me that for sweet secret Satan. Is, the whole problem with it is having to know what's available for streaming and whatnot. Um, oh, yeah, that's true. The Brain. Um, oh, five-star classic. Yes. <laughs> um, this is indeed a five-star Shaitola fest. Um, I mean, your star is David Gale. Um, so when you can't even afford Jeffrey Combs from Reanimator, but you have to go for the other guy from Reanimator, you know you're probably not in top quality. I mean, I love Jeffrey Combs. He could be in any movie, and I, you know, he could have been, I don't know, Kate Winslet in Titanic, and I would have watched that. I, I love Jeffrey Combs. Any any movie. If he was uh, Meryl Streep in Sophie's Choice, it would be a better movie. I don't care. Jeffrey Combs in anything. Um, but this one, unfortunately, has David Gale. Um, so it's not the most charismatic. But if you like these cheesy movies that are, um, it's not as good as the stuff. It's not as good as the 1980s, The Blob. But it's very much in that that vein um, of cheesy 80s um, absolute absolute nonsense 
um, which actually is very similar to the Bob. Um, yeah. You know, it's, it's got it's got some. But actually, with a better monster. I think. Yes, um, but not as much not as much fun characterization stuff. But yeah. you do have. You do have some bizarre. Well, oh, that's a that's a nice book. Is that like an Arrow edition? No, this is this is again from one hundred and one. It's something they call the Black Series. Wow! Um, so where they give you like a big book in there. A nice book. Yeah, yeah I've never seen that nice one. Well, I only know the one with the with the monster on the front. Yeah, I have the, yeah, the U.S. version doesn't come with with that stuff. Yeah, and it's got um, three commentaries. And that's what I've always wanted: three commentaries on the brain. Um, yeah. Um, including one by uh, Paul Zaza, which is great because it just reminds me of Godfather 3, Joey Zaza. <laughs> um, from, to finish off, two from Second Sight, um, Dog Soldiers on 4K. Oh, um, yeah. Which, uh, Neil Marshall, man, the early 2000s, I thought he was going to be the next big thing. Um, you had this and you followed it up with The Descent. Yeah. Um, and then he had Doomsday, and then yeah, he just started making nonsense. And now he's doing, you know, TV. Um, it, it didn't quite recapture the glory at all. Uh, but this is such a majestic werewolf movie. It's set in the Highlands of Scotland, um, where the army are on um, maneuvers, and um, yeah, it's exactly what you think it's going to be. But it's just a really gritty, um, intense. Basically, what um what 28 Days Later did for the zombie movie, this did for the werewolf movie. It kind of gave it that gritty British feel in the early 2000s when those things had kind of died away. Um, and Sean Pert was your lead in it. And um, yeah, it's just, just a fantastically atmospheric and, and, and dark little film, which looks fantastic on 4K, and that's from Second Sight. I mean, you were talking about books there. Look at that for a book. Wow. Um, uh, does anybody need 150 pages about dog soldiers? I'm not terribly sure. But um, if you do, then your second set yeah. is, is what you need. And being 4K, if you have a 4K player, of course, it's region free. Um, so, yeah, dog soldiers. Yeah, I got the 4K, the Shout uh, Factory 4K. It's, it looks great. Yeah, yeah I, um, I don't have either. I'll have to pick one of those up. Yeah, it's, that's, uh, a great, that's a great movie. Yeah, yeah it's, a good, it's, a, it's a good. Uh, Classic say, story, but without without inventing the wheel. You know? Yeah, it's kind of like a military movie meets werewolf film. It's uh, really yeah, which is something that Neil Marshall liked going into because um, that would also be in uh, Doomsday, where it was um, a, a pandemic in Scotland that was all walled off and whatnot. Yeah, um, so. yeah I like Doomsday. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Also, don't sleep on Centurion, another really good film from the old. Yes. Movie. Oh, yeah, that was actually there was about five films that came out within a few years of each other, following exactly that same story. There wasn't there the, the lost Roman tribe in Scotland. Um. So yeah, I don't know what that was. was one Chad Channing Tatum in it. Oh yeah, yeah, um, yep. the, the Eagle is that what that one? Yep. Yeah, yep. that one too. All those, uh, all those Channing Tatum's walking about Rome. Um, last one, um, again, from Second Sight is uh, The Guest um, from 2015, oh, um, which I absolutely love this movie. So it's, star, it's directed by Adam Wingard, who did Godzilla vs. Kong, okay. um, and it stars Dan, C Dan Stevens. Um, he is a soldier who returns home um, to the family of someone he says he served with overseas, and then it turns into... A very 80s, and believe me, you can hear it in the soundtrack, even a very 80s kind of... You remember those um, those movies like in the 80s and early 90s, like Pacific Heights, where you, you let somebody into your life and then they don't really want to leave again? Um, yeah. you know, uh, I'm trying to think of another one. Um, and uh, Michael uh, Kurt Russell did one um, with... Uh, uh, Ray Liotta and uh, Jennifer Jason Lee did one. What was yeah. that? Uh, single yeah. white female. Yeah, and loads of those kind of movies where you know, um, in fact, Samuel Jackson did one in the two thousands as well, where he was a cop who kind of harassed his neighbor. Uh, it was very much in that kind of vein of that, you know, <laughs> that the, some guests just don't leave. You know, it's like, it's like every party you've ever had in your life. Well, this guy. Hmm, um, he's not just coming in for a cup of tea and some cake. Um, he's he's not he's not too intent on leaving afterwards. Let's put it that way. Um, but it's a wonderfully tight thriller, um, and the treatment of it is absolutely sensational. Considering it's not really. I mean, Adam Wingard did Godzilla vs. Kong, but it's not as if he's A list. It's not as if any of the cast are particularly A list. Although Dan Stevens had quite a good career. Lance Reddick's the other big name in here from The Wire. It's not as if he's a major star. But again, 
150 page book about the making wow. of the best um, on 4K from second sight. So, you know, just phenomenal what stuff they can they can give this kind of treatment to in the these throwbacks, but aren't as obvious about it as stuff like Stranger Things and that kind of you know nonsense where everything is a reference to something. This just has the tone, but isn't copying anything in particular. It just has a reference for that. A bit like um, Trick or Treat, the anthology movie, a bit like that kind of vibe where it knows its history, but it's doing something new at the same time. So, yeah. Um, and then lastly, I, didn't, I don't have it here, but over on <clears throat> um, about the Tyler's channel, um, on LP Tremors, we've been covering the Friday the 13th movies every other week. Um, so we're up to part, uh, well, next one will be episode five. So we, we just covered, uh, God bless some Crispin Glover episode, uh, the uh, part four um, in the last week. So uh, the best one. Oh, yeah, uh, Crispin Glover and Friday part four. My goodness. Um, that's, <laughs> dance. Uh, that dance, yes, but just everything about them, really. I mean, what, what a journey the Friday the 13th films are when you sit down and have to analyze them in that way. That's a very strange franchise. <laughs> Right, Chris, we know all about that. Yeah, I was just going to say, yeah, Pete and I, was that two years ago? We At least, that? yeah. Two yeah, I think Pete, didn't, we, didn't we both pick Friday 4 as our favorite of the Friday 4 the or Friday 3, something like that, yeah, because those yeah. are two of my favorites, so yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah I, I, I went to that for Friday 3 over in LP Tremors because I really love that it, it clearly knows that it the, the 3D stuff is bullshit and how the hell can we incorporate it? Let's have 3D popcorn. Let's have the yo-yo coming into the camera. That kind All of stupid stuff, right? Yeah. Yes. Cool. And it, it does the remix of the Friday theme tune that turns oh, it into the theme song is great. Does it as a kind of William Castle like B movie from the 50s, but brought up to date. So Friday Thieves get a kind of special place in my heart. But uh yeah, I'm just enjoying doing it with Tyler and, and Ryan. It's been, been a fun time. So number five is coming up uh, next week. So that'll be fun. Cool. Part five might make your uh, zero uh Zero tomatoes. Uh, yes, uh, uh, over on Ryan Channel Zero, the hero. We'll, 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 unfortunately, none of them do make the list. We did have a good look. Um, um, no, no, it's amazing. All of the Friday movies have got at least two or three really positive reviews. Um, so we're having to plumb movies out that are, you know, before somebody gives them a good review because there's so many websites these days that will just give something a good review to be contrarian. So we're having to kind of. Give it a second, you know. well, might I recommend the Vanilla Ice movie, Cool as Ice? I'm pretty sure that's a zero, and it's awesome. So, uh... Uh, yeah. All okay. right. Uh, oh. Crank through some of these here. So uh, I just got this recently. I'm a big fan of this film, and I've been watching a lot of Guillermo del Toro films. Of oh, late. yeah. And uh, they released Pan's Labyrinth in 4K. Man. Hey, it's a great film. B, it looks amazing in 4K, and I, I I think the more I watch this movie, the more I like it. It's just a really cool kind of fantasy fable type of thing set in like a, a war story. Um, man, just some great, great costumes and practical effects in here, and it's just, it's creepy, it's charming. Uh, yeah, just absolutely amazing, and it looks great in 4K. 10 out of 10. 10 out of 10. Great stuff. Uh, let's see. Courtesy of uh, Arrow, uh, Girls Night Out. Oof. Yeah. This is a uh, really low budget, cheesy 80s slasher film set in a uh, sorority at a university with a really weird ending and yeah, some decent ending. kills, uh, some annoying cast members uh, that you just want to get and see get knocked off. Um, and yeah, that is someone wearing a kind of bear suit, right? <laughs> it's, it's crazy. It's, Same it's cheesy. Top, it's a uh, plot point. Yeah. It's, uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's kind of fun. It's kind of fun, but it's, it, don't expect this is not high class, high quality, uh, 80s slasher at all, but it, but it's fun. Well, it's um, not Martin Scorsese's <laughs> ghetto's night. Uh, no, it's, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Uh, this one was recommended actually by Craig and Chris, and I picked it up. I uh, got it fairly cheap, and it was actually really good. Ready or not? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. That's fun. A lot of fun. Man, really bloody that's and crazy cool. at the end. And, this, yeah. this, you know, one of those stories back, you know, 
be careful the family you marry into, right? You <laughs> never know yes. what could happen. And uh, this this uh, this lady Funny. marries into a family of psychopaths, and uh, it, the whole weekend uh, unfolds, and it's uh, it's pretty crazy. But she she's a real badass, so very very cool. The matter weaving is fantastic, and <laughs> yes. oh yeah, yeah, she is. She is. Uh, I enjoyed the hell out of this film. Uh, Intruder. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Ever thought what it would be like to get stuck <laughs> in a supermarket at night with a serial killer? Not as, much fun as, not as much fun as you think. Yeah. No, yeah. no. <laughs> but this is cool. Another example of, you know, you have some uh, some annoying people in the film. Uh, you got a couple hot, hot women. You got a, a, a Three, about three folks in the film who you suspect and then at the end you're kind of like oh okay yeah i guess that makes sense but there's some there's some really good kills in here and uh yeah i mean you know that's and it's got sam raimi in a small role and uh, hey yeah you know and uh, the the gore effects are pretty good so yeah. it, this is fun I, I enjoy the hell out of that there's that um i almost wasn't gonna bother with this because i just i love the original so much but uh this uh, this has gotten a lot of positive praise over the years and, and i like the main actor a lot and i like the the, the main actress uh the nosferatu remake from oh the brilliant True. Yeah. Yeah. yeah klaus kinski and uh isabella ajani who's gorgeous oh, uh this is quite good quite good uh it's it's a little you know i mean the, the story is very similar to the original uh, silent film, but it incorporates more of, I think, the, the, the Dracula story. And obviously it's not a silent film. Obviously it's in color and it's longer. Uh, really good performance by Klaus Kinski in this. And uh, I, I really like this. This has a nice Gothic overtones and uh, you know it's not gory, it's not bloody or anything like that, but really, really well done. Really well done active, really good music. The score is great. Um, creepy is all hell. Very, very good. Very underrated, I think. So that was that was worth it. And somebody's doing a remake of it at the moment, aren't they? Um, yes, I think uh, uh, the, the the guy who did The Witch, um, uh, Robert Eggers. Robert yeah, Eggers. Oh, um, yes. uh, that's right. Because um, Willem Dafoe's coming back to play um, Nosferatu after he played Max Shrek in Shadow with a Vampire with John Malkovich. Right. Yep. He's that's playing right. the part again, which is yeah. kind of fun. Yeah, he's been wanting to do that film for years. I'm not sure if he's actually started it yet or where that's at, but um, yeah. That's... So that'll be interesting. Um, this one uh, I picked up, I believe Davey talked about this a couple months back, uh, the Mephisto Waltz. Yes, oh, Alan, Alan Alda. See that. Alan That's Alda and a absolutely smoking hot Jacqueline Bisset. Yeah. Moly. Um, this is just a really good kind of, uh, you know, satanic cult type of film. Uh, you know, these these type of films popped up all over the place in the seventies. Cause after, yeah. you know, Rosemary's baby, it was kind of cool to have these kind of like satanic overtones. Of course, hammer was doing as well. Devil rides out. And this is a few years before the exorcist, but a really cool, creepy movie. Uh, and like I said, Jacqueline Bassett is awesome in this film. So I definitely highly recommend it. This is very, very enjoyable. So Davey, thank you for that. And that's uh, Kino yeah. Lorber. Terrific tone to it. It's very much like the Changeling with George C. Scott. Yes, you know, which is another great movie and coming to 4K. 4K from, from Seven, Seven, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So I, I love the Changeling. A really, really good film. And last but not least, uh, I picked this up. This is a uh, Screen Factory, Shout Factory, uh, two on one Night of the Sorcerers and The Lorelei's Grass. Oh, yeah, that's good. These are both, you know, really cool, low budget horror. Uh, highly recommend if you get it. You know, two for these two for ones are really good. Um, you know, if you can get a hold of these. And uh, yeah, the first one is just uh, takes place in Africa and it's all this kind of like voodoo stuff going on. Really, really cool. There's a good amount of gore in both both of these. There's a, a weird monster in the uh, in the second film. You know, rubber monsters are always great. The, this is uh, this is fun stuff here. So if you can get a hold of that again, it's uh, Night of the Sorcerers and uh, the Lorelei's Grasp Screen Factory double feature. So. The only other thing I, I watched is, and I can't remember the name of the film. Maybe you guys remember I was talking about that, that film on Shutter that I was talking about um, that I asked if anybody was, had watched. I can't remember the name. I was just looking for it before. Anyway, I'll remember next time. I watched it. It was pretty good. I, know. I, I can't I can't remember. Yeah, I don't know. It was a little last weekend. I was asking you guys if you had seen it. I can't think of it now. So, I, I, you know, it's funny because I have Shutter, and 
I just forget I have it half the time because I'm yeah. watching other stuff. And every now and then I, I'll see like on Facebook or somewhere, someone talking about, oh, did you ever see this Shutter original? I'm like, oh, let me go check it out. And then I, I'll either forget or in this instance, I went and watched it. I was like, oh, that's pretty good. So there, there was some good stuff on there. I so did see the, uh, I can't think of, this was a couple weeks ago, the sequel to uh, Train to Busan. Oh, yeah. Man. How was that? Peninsula, I, some something Peninsula. I liked it better than the original, to be honest. Oh, really? The original is pretty good. The original is pretty good. <laughs> yeah. But I, I liked the sequel uh, even better. Mm-hmm. Um, was I can't it, think of uh, any... What was different about it? Anything? or just? It was just, it, to me, it was more action-packed. Okay. Uh, it was just, you know, went, it went straight into it. And um, I, I like the last like 45 minutes of Train to Basan was really good. I thought, you know, it yeah, it took this, a while this, to get this, going, but this movie was pretty much like that the, 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 the whole time. time. Mm-hmm. And it's very, it's very similar to that, you know, um, but it takes place, um, you know, years later, like after the whole area has been uh, kind of walled off and all the zombies are in the wall. It's sort of like a heist movie mixed with the, the setting from, from Train to Basan. Uh, but I, I liked it way more than I thought I would. Wow. Okay. I'll check that out. Yeah, I, I but to me, you know, this, that's the great thing about Shudder. Um, I, what I love about it is there's all these movies that I want to see, but like, like you just showed, right? Like Girls Night Out. Like to me, Girls Night Out is pretty bad, but you know, it's, it's one to watch, but like, I'll never watch it again. So that's like a movie. If you could watch on Shutter, it's perfect because you know you're going to stream it and you don't need to spend money on it. And yeah, I mean that was a go. perfect example of I took a chance on that because you know our, right. our friends did the documentary and I was like, oh, yeah. so I went and bought it and I watched it. And I was like, all right, that's kind of fun. Yeah, will I watch it again anytime soon? Probably not. Probably never. Yeah. So that's what I really like about Shutter, both new and old. There's a lot of good stuff on there that you can you could stream. And then, you know, decide if you want to buy it. And I know in my case, 99% of the time, I'm like, woo, thank God I didn't buy that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I thought streaming was supposed to help us out, man. I mean, I don't know about you, but I seem to have more going out and streaming than I ever did paying for cable in the first place these days. Oh, yeah, it's, it, it all adds up. It definitely does. I've got the Arrow player. I've got the BFI player. I've got, I've got um, Netflix. I've got this. Amazon, Netflix, Shutter, yeah. Is it, called, ter- is it called terrified pete is that that's right? the one that is the one terrified yeah 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 that was it craig good job craig yeah terrified was pretty cool that was pretty cool yeah i i enjoyed that so if anybody has shutter check out terrified check that it's one. a really yeah. creepy yeah. film yeah terrified. Really good. and this this upcoming saturday on the uh uh, uh chris was mentioning on sven Gulli, they're showing a trilogy of terror yes uh, another yeah, really cool. classic and they're also doing a a Sven Gulli documentary. Yeah. Uh, I, I hear in, in New York, we get it on MeTV. I don't know. That's what I get. Yeah. Yeah, there's so much stuff to watch. Yeah, I, I have Shudder. I have uh, I have Arrow. Sometimes I go on Arrow and I'm looking at all the films. I'm like, God, I own like half of these. Yeah. <laughs> Why do I subscribe to this thing? I don't know. Whatever. Because, you know, this. But then, yeah, you're right. If you watch something on the streaming services and it knocks your socks off, then you can go buy it. Right. Rather than buy first, sight unseen, and then you watch it, and you're like, eh, there right. goes 25 bucks, right? Yeah. yeah, that's what I did with the whole bloody Shaw Brothers box there. I thought, I'll watch another one. I'll watch another one. And then I spent 100 I didn't know. Just keep watching them on the idol player. Right. Yeah. Yeah, one of these days I'll stop buying stuff, uh, or at least as much as I do. And just, oh. I keep saying that, but, you know, it's... Stuff the curse. Yeah. Anyway, there you have it, everybody. Some uh, some recommendations, some not so great recommendations uh, to go check out. So, uh, if you have anything really cool that you've seen uh, over the last few weeks, put them down in the comments as well. Uh, but if uh, you do go check out any of these films and you want to report back and let us know what you think, one thing, Pete. Yes. I tell everybody, this is the month you and I certainly have been waiting for. Dan Brown's been waiting for the Frederick March version of Jekyll and Hyde is on Blu-ray from Warner Archive on October the 26th, I believe. Yep. And also, and the other one, Return of the Vampire. Return of the Vampire as well. We've been been like Fred Flintstone trying to get into the house asking for (laughs) for Dr. Jekyll. Well, my yeah, that, 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 that Jekyll and Hyde is is one is probably the last classic monster film from the '30s that's never been released on Blu-ray. Well, it's coming finally. Freak, freaks, oh, freaks too. Yeah, that's right. Jeez, freaks, what a creepy ass movie. Oh my god. 
Freaks. Freaks is a hard watch. Yeah. <laughs> it's a hard watch. But check out High is an absolute masterpiece. So yeah. Get that order in, folks. Get that order in for Yeah. That's right. So there you have it, everybody. Uh, another episode of the Monsters Den in the books. Visit us on the web at www.seatranquility.org. We're on Facebook. We're on YouTube all together all the damn time. I oh, uh, want to mention, because someone here mentioned it before, I think Chris mentioned it earlier, Secret Satan, the Halloween challenge is coming up in just a couple of weeks. We actually started talking about it today. We're going to be getting our assignments pretty soon. So look for that episode probably right before Halloween, the week of Halloween. So for those of you who didn't see the original Secret Satan episode from a few months back, basically all members of the Monsters Den get together. Everybody gets a Secret Satan who's going to give them a, a film challenge, a film that they've never watched before. Uh, and they're not going to know who gave them the film. They're going to watch the film. We get on Zoom. We do an, a show. Everybody talks about the film that they were given. Did they like it? Did they not like it? And then they try. Then they try and guess who gave them the film. So uh, that the first time around was a lot of fun. We're going to do it again. Hopefully, everybody gets some films they kind of like because a few of us got movies <laughs> we weren't crazy about, right? The, the Christmas in particular. Jamie uh, was the only one. I picked Jamie's. I gave him this Quater Mask in the Pit, and he loved it. And he was the only one who did. Yeah, I kind of dug mine. Like it's crazy. I was okay. I was Okay, Chris, Chris offended me in that episode. I remember he Sorry, said, Davey. I, should, I should the, have known you. This, I should have known the, you had better taste than Jamie. This is the biggest piece of shit. This most pretentious crap I've ever seen in my life. Who do you think picked it? Oh, it's probably Davey. Davey. Probably. <laughs> it's got to be a Davey. <laughs> wow. Well, it was British. <laughs> it was British. Uh, so you know, this time around. Right. Who's your YouTube horror host from the other side of America? You blaming me for him as well? Jesus Christ. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> so that'll be coming up in just about a month, I guess. So uh, stay tuned for that. We've also got uh, some other interesting things in the coming weeks, including a uh, ranking the Hammer Vampire films. Uh, the Dracula. Oh, so that's okay. uh, that's yeah, that's, that. that's we got to get doing that as well. Oh, so, uh, I'm already going for that one. <laughs> So what did we say? Ten of them? Is that what we said? Is that well, we I was just going to say, let, let's get the definitive list. So yeah. If you could send that out, because um, I, I can't, I can't rewatch everything, but I'll probably rewatch something. But I don't want to watch something that's not on the list. So yeah, so I'll do that. So so that's coming up. So for all you Hammer fans, uh, we're going to be ranking the uh, the Dracula films, or either the, just the Dracula films or the vampire films, because I think if you count the vampire films, that's an extra three, maybe four. So. So one or the other, it's going to be coming in the, in the next couple of weeks. So stay tuned for that. Uh, in addition, Davey mentioned before the really, the Blu-ray release of uh, Jekyll and Hyde, as well as Return of the Vampire. When those come out, you'll get full review episodes from uh, Davey, Dan, and I on those because we're anxiously awaiting those and we want to talk about them. So all this coming up on the Monsters Den, including more stuff. So uh, we'll see you all next Thursday and the Thursday after that. And the Thursday after that, and so on and so forth. For Chris Allo, Craig Kaminsky, and Davey Gallagher, I am Pete Pardo. See you at SOT Fall Fest in a day and a half, everybody. So uh, till then, have a good one. Bye bye.